Hello everyone and welcome to another SDL 2.0 tutorial video. In this video I will be showing you how to handle input in SDL and for that we will be creating our input manager. So just like all our other managers um, this one will be a singleton as well so we can go ahead and create our .h file. We'll call this one input manager and do the usual thing with the class sewing. Um, if not defined input manager underscore each define input manager underscore each so for this class now um, we will need sdl.h so we'll include that and for the private variables we will need the input manager pointer for the instance so static input manager pointer as instance as well as a constant uint8 pointer which will hold our key state so m keyboard states oh, pointer now for our public functions we will have the static input manager pointer instance as well as a static void release. Um, there are two more public functions that we're going to need. One to update our input manager and the other one to check if a key is pressed or not. So boolean key down. This one will take in an SDL scan code and we'll call this one scan code oh. and then finally void update so this will be it for all our public functions next up are the private functions which will just be our constructor and destructor so Okay, so and this should be it for our .h file. So moving on to the cpp file. And in the cpp file, we will include input manager as well as initialize our s instance. So input manager pointer, input manager s instance and this will be equal to null at the beginning and then input manager pointer input manager instance fs instance is null then we need to create it and then just return s instance now moving on to release, so void input manager, release. All this will do is just delete our S instance as well as setting it to null. And this should be it for our static functions. Next up are the constructor and destructor. These don't have anything in this class. So we don't need to worry about it for now, just create them and leave them empty. And moving on to the two main functions, so boolean, input manager, key down, sdl scan code, scan code, and this one will just return M keyboard state at our scan code and finally just update so void input manager update and what this will do is set our M keyboard states oh uh, yep so M keyboard states is going to be equal to SDL underscore 
get key state, keyboard state and this will take a null. So this one will fill up our array with all the keyboard states from the SDL framework. Now that we have this all this set up, we can move on to creating an instance of this class. So if we go back to the game manager, because this is where we will do our updating for the input manager, we'll include input manager.h as well as um, create an instance of input manager. So input manager pointer m input manager and then game manager.cpp. Uh, right under the asset manager, we can do m input manager is going to be equal to input manager instance. And in our destructor, we can release it. So input manager release and m input manager is going to be equal to null. So for the input manager, we will do our updates right here. So before the rendering and for the most part, the updating will be done before any updates for objects in the game. So input manager update. And since this is a singleton, it's going to update wherever there is an instance of input manager as well. So let's try it out and see if it works. So, so far what we have is if we run it, if we run this project, we have a single ship and then there's white space everywhere. So let's see if we can move this ship now. For that, we will need to go back to our game entity for a second. So entities, game entity, and let's add a little functionality to let us move this entity around. So void translate. So that's in game entity.h. We'll add void translate, which will take a vector to vec. So we want this object to translate by the amount that we give in the vector two. And for that, we will go back to game entity.cpp to implement that. So void trans game entity translate vector two vec. And what we want to do is increment the M position by, um, by our vector. So we want to do something like M plus, plus equals vec. But we didn't specify what plus equals means. And for that, we need to go back to our um, math helper dot H so that we can tell it what to do with a plus equals operator. So over here, we will go down here, still inside the struct for vector two because plus equals uh, deals with a single vector um, on the right side and our vector on the left hand side. Whereas in plus, it dealt with two vectors and then returned a single vector afterwards. So in here, we'll do it inside the vector two struct and we will say vector two reference operator plus equals is going to be, is going to have parameters vector two reference of the right hand side. And what we will do is just say X, our X is going to plus equal the right hand side's X. So right hand side dot X, our Y is going to plus equal the right hand side dot Y. And we will just return a reference to this. So that should be it for the plus equals. And we might as well uh, put in our minus equal as well because we might need it later. So minus equals, we will minus equal X, minus equal Y and return this. So it's the exact same idea. Uh, finally, let's add a times equal as well. And for that, it will be pretty much the same as the minus or plus equal, but on the right hand side, instead of taking a uh, vector two, it will take a float instead. And for the float we will do, so this is times equal. And for the float we will do, so left hand side dot X times equals, uh, times the right hand side. And left hand side dot Y times our right hand side. And that should be it for a multiplication for an operator. Um, and then if we need any more operator overloading, we'll do it later. 
So now we can go back to our game manager. So in our game manager, we can now translate our texture. So let's see if we can do that. So if mm put manager key down sdl underscore scan code underscore let's say w. So if w is pressed, we want to translate our um, our texture up. So m text. Translate by a factor two of so up. Um, you remember that in SDL, um, the coordinates start from the top left corner. So up is going to be negative on the on the y, not positive because positive is going down on SDL. So we'll go negative on the y. So 0, 0.0 f on the x, and then let's say negative 40 on the y. And we'll take this vector and times it by our m timer delta time. And what this will do is make the, our movement uh, time dependent instead of frame dependent. And this should be it for our movement using w. Let's see if it works. So now if I press w, as you can see, our ship is moving up. And then we can do things like else if m input manager key down sdl underscore scan code underscore s m text translate by a vector to 0, 0.0 f 40.0 f this time and this will be multiplied by m timer delta time Now sh we should have up and down movement and so on. So we can repeat the same thing for A and D on the X. And this should be it for keyboard input. Um, maybe we'll add more functionality to the input manager as well later on, like um, handling um, game pads and touching. So um, this should be a pretty good framework for us to deal with our input. But for the purposes of this video, this should be it for our key inputs. So I really hope that this video helped so far. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below, and I will see you in the next video.